everybody. Happy Thursday. I am so excited to be joining all of you for another inspirational Thursday video. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Liz and I'm here with Class Act to do some really cool uh, stuff that hopefully inspires you to try something fun yourself. So <laughs> on that note, tonight I'm going to be playing around with the um, New, new to us anyway, Lisa Horton um, Cloud9 Interference Inks. So for those of you who aren't familiar with them, they are very, very cool. I had the opportunity to um, see them in action during our latest crop, and I thought they were the coolest thing ever, and I went down the rabbit hole, and here we are carrying them. So, <laughs> hey, Shirley. So the Cloud9 Interference Ink are pigment-based inks. Um, they are from Lisa Horton, who is a very wonderful um, company slash designer. Um, and what they are is um, an ink pad that actually shifts color. So um, I have some different color card stocks to show you. But basically, when you apply it like on white, it's going to show up brown. But then if you... Um, have it on a darker cardstock, it's going to show up with sort of like a hint of blue. Or this one, for example, is going to look green on white cardstock, but then it shifts to purple. So it's like a shifting ink. It's very, very cool. And these are the ones that I have in my collection so far, and uh, I can't wait to add more. So, <laughs> um, but I did want to show you guys how cool they are. So that's the purpose of tonight's video. So without any further ado, um, I'm really excited to just kind of dive right in and start swatching things and um, just designing with you guys. So uh, first things first, let's do some swatches. So here we have a Mermaid Lagoon Shimmer. Now this one, when I swatch it on the white, is like a bluey sort of mermaid tail color. Here, I'll bring it closer to the camera. So that's Mermaid Lagoon. It's got a bit of a shimmer to it. Now... When I swatch the same color on the black cardstock, bring it up to the camera here, it's got like purple sort of shifting tones. So, blue to purple. Very, very cool. You wouldn't even know that's the same ink. Now for the next one, this one is called Magic Garden Shimmer. So this one, oh, <laughs> was a big swatch. When I swatch it green, it's on the white cardstock, it swatches green. Hey Jennifer. And then when I bring it up to the the black and I show it on camera. So here's what it looks like actually on the white. Now I'm going to let it dry and then it obviously looks more magical. But again, it shifts to that beautiful sort of purpley color. For the royal truffle, that's going to show up as a brown on the white. But when I swatch it on the black cardstock, you end up with like a blue sort of shifty shimmer, which is neat. Hey, Kim. Thanks. Thanks for joining, everybody. I'm really, really excited to do this tonight. So this one is called Fruit Salad. This one is really nice. So when I shift or when I swatch it on the white, it's like a nice orangey color. Um, and I'll show you these once they dry a little bit, too. Um, but then when I have it on the black, it's like this sort of... Um, like orange, yellow, champagne color. Very pretty. And last but not least, speaking of champagne, is pink champagne shimmer. So very bright, vibrant, very pink on the white cardstock. Um, now once this sort of settles in, it actually will shift to like a more uh, sort of champagne-y color or like a very pale yellow. So... There you have it. Um, they're just really cool inks, and I love that they show up on black cardstock. I feel like you don't often get that with a lot of ink, so uh, I really wanted to play around with these guys with you tonight, so that's what we're going to do. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you guys is what they actually look like in action. So because they are pigment ink, um, they do blend really, really beautifully. So I'm going to be using the Royal Truffle Shimmer and I'm going to just blend it on three different card panels and we'll use them after to cut out some shapes 
and then we'll just build up a card together. So, <laughs> woohoo! Um, I'm gonna start on my white cardstock. Set these guys aside, and note my blending probably isn't gonna be the greatest, but that's okay because we will be cutting these panels afterwards. So as you can see on the white cardstock, it sort of shows up as like a brown. There we go. So I just have a four and a quarter by five and a half panel here and I will definitely be cutting into it. So again, I'm not worried if, if, if my blending is great or not, but look at that. When I hold it up to the camera, you can really see the, the other color shift in there already. It's so cool. Like I am, I am amazed with these guys. So even if you just color a panel and use like an embossing folder on it, um, use it for die cutting different shapes, uh, it's just a different way to up your cardstock, if you will, because this was just a, a white piece of cardstock and now it's like color shifting and it's cool and it's like a soft brown, but then when you hold it up to the light on the right angles, you get that like amazing blue shimmer to it, which I think is just the coolest thing ever. I'm really excited about these guys, in case you can't tell. <laughs> if that doesn't translate to the camera. So yeah, I definitely, if you are in the area, recommend checking this out in person. Um, I'll bring the samples to the store after the video. I'll post my finished project and uh, hopefully you get the idea. But look at that. It's got that like dreamy sort of blue shift happening. Um, and then from far away, it just looked brown. Ooh. So pretty. So that's what it looks like on white cardstock. For my next trick. Hey, Linda. Hey, Donna. Hey, Lisa. Gita. Thank you all for joining. Um, for my next trick, I'm just going to do the same thing, but on a black cardstock. So the lady who had these at the crop, she was working with the, the mermaid one, and that's when she really sort of captured my interest because um, seeing them up close, they're really, really amazing. Um, it's hard to believe that like it's one ink that does so many different sort of fun coloring prospects. Okay. <laughs> so here we have our black panel. And again, when I hold it up to the light, it's just got that like wonderful sort of blue shimmer to it. So cool. So yeah, hard to believe that that and that are the same ink. And then for my last trick, we um, discovered that if you do it on a craft card stock, uh, it also shifts to a different color again. So why not demonstrate that during tonight's video? So I'm just using a blending brush, putting it across the whole panel, just so I can show you guys like how cool this looks on different colors. Now I haven't tried it on a printed cardstock yet, but it's probably pretty awesome. Bella loves craft. Who doesn't? I think craft is uh, one of the greatest inventions whenever I can't find a match <laughs> for something uh craft usually looks really good it looks fabulous in junk journals um yeah it's just like a an underrated color okay so there we have it here is what it looks like on craft so um when I hold up the white and the craft you can kind of see 
the very subtle difference, but the craft almost picks up more of the the blue. It's like sort of in between the black and the white. And then here we have it on a black cardstock. So that is all the same shifty ink, which I just think is so dreamy. So there we have it. Um, for my next trick, I am going to uh, use an embossing folder. And I actually pre-did this so you guys didn't have to watch me crank it through my machine. But here is the new um, Sizzix Catherine Breen embossing folder, textured embossing folder. It is called Under the Sea. Um, and as soon as I saw this, I fell in love with it. I knew I needed it and it came into my craft stash. So we do have, um, more of these on the way. There is a couple in stock. So everything I use in tonight's video should be listed. If you go to our website, classact.ca, click on shop inspirational Thursday, and you will find tonight's category. I think it's called collab nine under the sea. Yeah. Isn't that cool? The, the different like variations it gives. That's a good word. So really quickly before we move on to decorating our embossed panel, I'm just going to clear off my table space a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so here's what uh, that embossing folder actually looks like done up. It's simply stunning. This is probably one of my new favorites. I am very into like the um, under the sea sort of feel. Uh, if you like nautical, this is definitely one you'll probably want for your stash as well. Um, but yeah, as soon as I saw this, I thought to myself, how fun would it be mixing it with the cloud nine inks? So that's what we're going to do. All right. So for the first color, I think we're just gonna start off with the Magic Garden Shimmer. Now for this next step, you could definitely use a blending brush if you have like a, a nice like delicate one. Um, you could use a finger protector if you have one, but you guys know me, I'm pretty messy. I don't mind getting messy. So I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna shift it right on the ink. Now when I flip my finger over, it's gonna show up green, but when I apply it to the seaweed on our embossing folder. Um, it's actually gonna show up like a nice shifty purple. So I chose to do it in black because I'm obsessed with like the color shifting properties of these inks. So I thought it would be kind of a fun way to showcase this. I'm gonna do a little bit more seaweed over in the corner here. There we go. So yes, when I hold it up to the camera, you can see that it sort of shifts into a purple, which is very, very cool. And in swatching it on my finger, I can also show that it wipes off very easily. So, ta-da. <laughs> Clean up is great. Uh, next, I'm gonna go in with some pink champagne, I think. And I'm gonna do the coral using the pink champagne. There's Richard. Hi. So I'm just using my finger, um, highlighting some of the grooves, but already it's giving this embossing folder life, dimension, different colors. It sort of gives it that underwater feel. I'm going to stop there for the time being with the pink. And I'm going to go in with a little bit of fruit salad shimmer. That's this guy here. I'm thinking definitely the shell in a fruit salad would be cool. <laughs> yes, I am finger painting, Cheryl. It's very fun. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do all the shells in the pink champagne color because why not? Uh, again, if you guys are, you know, cleaner than I am, you could use your blending brushes. Um, you could use your um, various tools, but I'm just going to use my finger because it's fun and easy. Maybe that's why I do like getting messy. It's like finger painting. So there we have it. This one sort of shifts to like a yellow 
champagne color when you do it in a thin layer. Now, as you can see, this one's still drying, but it's starting to take shape where it's like that silvery yellow color. And for the last color, the Mermaid Lagoon Shimmer, I'm gonna use a little bit of that. I'm gonna do our starfish. And I'm gonna make those guys pop a little bit. Anywhere I see a starfish, he's getting some purple shimmer. A little bit here. Now, we're starting to look like this, which I mean is so cool. It's already given this embossing folder a whole new sort of spin. And <laughs> lessons from Conrad. You're not wrong, Donna. <laughs> uh, so now I think one more thing I'm going to do is go in with the Royal Truffle Shimmer because uh, we haven't used that on here yet. And I'm just going to do some areas. Um, I'm even going to go over some areas and just give it like a hint of blue because I think it just levels everything up just a little bit more. So you can actually layer them as well. Like how stunning and needed that blue, I think. How stunning is that? So shifty. Uh, it looks like metal or something. It's very, very cool. So um, at the beginning, this was totally black. And uh, now with the color shifting properties of this ink, we have done some really cool color coloring. Okay. So next I am going to take these lovely little panels that we um, made earlier. And I'm going to use, I have this die set here. This actually is a new one. Um, it is called Ocean Critters and it does like little lobsters so and coral. So I'm gonna cut out some lobster pieces and some coral pieces. <laughs> uh, and we're gonna like add it all together. I know, I didn't think I needed these earlier and then once I saw them in action, I'm like, oh, now I want every color. So my collection will be growing very quickly. Richard, I hope you're not watching still. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to bring my machine to the table, and I think I'm going to start off with my lobster body and some of my other lobster pieces. Oh, don't mind me, just being a mess. Okay, so lobster body, for sure, going to do that in that shifty brownie color. Uh, gonna do some antennas, I think some claws, and maybe this piece of his body. <laughs> I'm just guessing, so hopefully this looks good. It looked really good in my head. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna cut out our lobster shape, and then I'm gonna also use the black panel <clears throat> to cut that out as well. cut out the other pieces for our lobster friend. So, ta-da, we have this awesome iridescent claw. Actually, I have two of them, but I will worry about them in a minute. Lobster body. Okay, I also want to use this beautiful black shimmery piece and use the rest of the die. So I'm gonna do some coral, some more claws. How many claws does he need? Okay, some shell or body pieces, and I assume that's the tail. We're just gonna cut these guys. Oh, then I'll pop everything out and we will assemble our lobster friend. Okay. Oh, there's the tail. I'm guessing. <laughs> okay. I think that's all his body pieces. I'm going to set my dies back off to the side. Oop. Move my machine. Actually, maybe I'll do another coral. 
because I think this card needs some coral. I'm just gonna cut one more coral piece. Um, now you guys might be asking yourselves, what happened to the craft? Well, the craft one, this guy here, I'm thinking of using for the background. So I'm actually going to mount our card on there and then onto the cardstock. So I'm saving him for later. Long story short. Okay. Just gonna move these out of my way. All right, excellent. So now I have to <laughs> take all of our lobster pieces and get them out of the dies. Good thing I have a pokey tool, which is not listed for tonight's segment, but we do have pokey tools. Um, how stinking pretty is that? So this is just a little tool with some charms that I use to poke out my die pieces to make them nice and easy for me to get out. Otherwise I struggle. I don't know about you guys, but I struggle. <laughs> just gonna clean up this one. There we go. Almost forgot his other claw. I think he's gonna want that. Close. Move my mess. And then we can build our lobster. And we're gonna stick him on the card front here. I don't, antennas. I was going to say whiskers, but lobsters don't have whiskers. At least none, none that I've met. Not that I know a lot. Thanks, Jax. Jax said, looking good. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's going to look really good by the end, I am hoping. I have a vision. So far, it's working. So there's our dreamy, iridescent lobster body. Okay. So I'm going to start off with our lobster body and I'm going to grab some glue and we're going to build up a lobster. Of course we need glue. Ooh, that's too much. <laughs> so I'm going to put down some claws. So I will say this uh, die set is very user friendly. You basically just build him up um, according to the shapes, which is pretty good. That's where his tail's gonna go. So yeah, when I hold him up to the camera, it's hard to believe that this is all one ink. That's the Royal Truffle Shimmer. Next. His claws get a second layer. Oops. I'm gonna put the brown back on top. I'm gonna save these beautiful coral pieces and we're gonna put them somewhere on the card just to give it some more Oomph. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see. He's going to want his lobster body yaddy yaddy. <laughs> Just going to poke out some holes with my pokey tool. The fun of watching this live. <laughs> There we go. Okay. 
A little more. So sorry for the background noise. Uh, we don't have our air conditioning going and our house is pretty, pretty warm. So <laughs> I can hear my whole neighborhood. All right, good enough. I assume this is his head piece. And then this must be part of his body. Punch out some more little holes before we fasten this guy down. There we go. And I'll also be putting this piece down. Now this piece, funny enough, is not a shell. It is actually part of our lobster's tail. So, the more you know. Oop, too much glue. There we go. So there we have, oh, one more thing. <laughs> gonna do a little bit of glue on his whiskers. I know they're not whiskers. <laughs> and stick them on according to the plan. There we go. So now we have a beautiful iridescent blue lobster. How pretty is that? So he's gonna go onto our card. Um, but before I like start super assembling everything, I'm just going to trim this down um, a quarter inch sort of maybe at the top and the side so that it's going to get matted on our craft cardstock because I think that's just going to make it pop a little bit extra. So I'm not sure if I want to leave it like that and have our card like this, or if I should take the um, same ink and ink up the side, like trim it down a little more and have like a white border. Kind of like the look of the white border. So I'm gonna trim these down. Yes, another quarter inch and another quarter inch. Bear with me. Don't they face up? I'm not sure, Donna. <laughs> the antennas? They might. So there we go. That's going to give us a white border. There we go. So here's what we're left with. So pretty. Okay, now I am ready to start assembling. So I'm gonna put our lobster friend somewhere down at the bottom of the card, maybe like that. Oop. A little bit of glue everywhere. Then he needs some coral somewhere. Maybe again down towards the bottom just to hide. Yes, the tentacles. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Like, turn them around. Uh, according to this die set, they actually go down. But if I were doing this without the guide, I would absolutely agree with you and put them the opposite direction. So I don't know. If you snip them, you could probably do, do what you wish with them. Okay. So here we have 
our little lobster friend. And the last thing I need is a sentiment. Now I pre-stamped one earlier. Can you tell me it? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I thought it cut it up and used it as our background. So uh, I pre-stamped one. I used white embossing powder. It's not the greatest, but we're going to cut around it. It says, let's celebrate. Because I think that's hilarious. He is a lobster. So this is from a stamp set that is actually totally sea creature pun. It says things like, see you soon. Um, hope your birthday is clawsome. Stuff like that. And I just think it's hysterical. So I'm just going to roughly cut this out. I guess I should have done this earlier, but you guys can watch me do it on camera. Sorry about that. <laughs> so yes, let's celebrate because lobsters have shells and I think it is hysterical. I'm a sucker for a good pun. So, there's our sentiment. Now, should I put it at the top? Yeah, I think it's cute up there. So, I'm just going to glue that on. I could pop dot it, but I don't feel like it. I think this card has enough sort of dimension happening through the embossing folder and the shading and whatnot. So, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. We got this. We got this this and last but not least I'm gonna go in with some class act bling this one is sodalite and again it picks up like that sort of purple bluey shifty shimmer so I'm just gonna use a couple pieces of bling just to jazz up our card a little bit more Let's see. Boop. all right we're starting off with five. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. The bling does not want to cooperate with me, so we'll see. Do I have a jewel picker? Yes. Is my jewel picker accessible? Not right now. <laughs> okay, so once the glue dries down... I'm actually going to stick my card bases together and we will have a beautiful final card to share. Meanwhile, just take in all that uh, iridescent goodness. So there we have it. Uh, we completed this card using a gorgeous embossing folder, some cool bling, a really cute die, some sentiments, and uh, most importantly, these amazing shifting inks from Lisa Horton. So hope you guys um, are now on the bandwagon or <laughs> go down the rabbit hole. They have like, I don't know, like 20 fabulous colors and I can't wait to have them all in my stash because these might be my new favorite inks for the next, for at least the summer. So <laughs> uh, on that note, um, thanks for joining guys. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope you're enjoy enjoying the um, beautiful temperatures and everything that is spring. And I will see you guys next week. Okay, bye!